This is Chris with Creations by Chris, and today I'm creating a Sharara pants outfit from an Indian sari. And these would not be your average Sharara pants. This would be an outfit you could wear to a wedding or a special formal event. But first, some pictures of the final garment. This is Chris for Creations by Chris. For what I've done today, I'm laying out my materials that I'll be using for my next project. Okay, these are the materials I'm going to be using for my next project, which will be a blouse and an Indian style pan called Sharara. Now the main, now the main material we'll be using will be this Indian sari. And this sari is a Georgia fabric and it has a metallic embroidery throughout the back. And we'll be using it for both pieces, the blouse and both the pants. And we'll be using this for the lining, which is just a synthetic lining fabric. Okay, we'll also be using this full way sheer stretch mesh fabric for the sleeves. And we're gonna be using this crepe back satin, which is also gonna be for a portion of the sleeves. And here we have a metallic knit fabric, which is going to be used as appliques throughout the outfit. And I'll be showing you how you can cut this out to make your own appliques. Okay, here are the materials that I'm going to be using to do some embellishments for the uh, next outfit I'll be working on. And here we see there's a fringe. The fringe to the right is a royal blue of color, but it wasn't quite the color. I needed more of a periwinkle. So to the left, you see the fringe in which I was able to dye to get the appropriate color. And then we see the copper color trim that's going to be used for the tassels that I'll be making, as well as the, again, you see the blue ball of fingernail polish. And I use this to polish the actually the empty thread spools that I'll be using as well and then you see there's bead that's on a, a ribbon and then there's also in the little dish additional copper color beads and to the left of that is wire that I'll need for this project and then also a glue gun and I will show you once the uh, tassels are dead how they're going to be used on the actual garment. Okay, this is the fabric piece we'll be using for the Shogara pants. And it's 23 inches wide and it's 77 inches long. And we'll be doing uh, two inch pleats. Okay, one of the things that you need to keep in mind anytime you're working on any project, whether it be dress, whether it is a pair of pants, or whether it is a skirt, when you purchase your fabric, you want to have in mind what garment you're going to be making from it. Another thing you need to take in consideration if the garment has any type of design or print on it, which direction are you going to run that print? Well, for this, it's a sari, and this one happens to be seven yards long and only 44 inches wide, and it has a pattern, and this pattern is running vertically. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch it up a little bit. In the design, I'm going to run it vertically as well as horizontal. I'm going to be making another pair of the Sharara pants. And these pants are going to be made from this particular sari, which is actually a Georgette fabric. So it will definitely have to be lined. And I'm going to run the top part of the pants in the direction that it's laying. And then what I'm going to do something different. I'm going to run the lower part of the pants in another direction. The lower leg of the pants I'm going to run vertically. I'm going to take advantage of the embroidery that's running vertically throughout the fabric and it has a scallop type of design on the end. 
and I'm going to use this to my advantage. So watch and see how I do this. So what I did here, instead of opening the fabric up the long way and folded it in half, I folded it vertically, crossways, because you see it's these uh, design. If the design is running horizontally, that's the way I want it to run on the upper part of the leg of the pants, meaning from the waist to the knee. And remember the end I said there's embroidery? Well, I'm going to use that portion of the um, fabric or the sari to run the design vertically so that I can have that embroidered scallop design at the bottom half of the pants, which means it will be from the knee down to the floor. Okay, so I'm going to explain exactly what I mean. This is the direction of the fabric. This is the design. Because I want this to design on the upper part of the pants to run in this direction. But I also, I want to save as much of this end of the fabric that has the scalp design on it. I want to save as much of this as possible for the lower parts of the pants. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open it up crossways. I'm going to fold it in half. like this and now I know I need at least 17 inches at this point here so since I opened it and then I've um, double folded it instead of me using this in here which I want to save for the bottom part of the pants I'm going to cut it on the opposite end that would be here and I'm going to match up the design here I'm just going to put my little ham as they call it for my pressing ham here to hold the fabric in place while I'm doing this and this is the front part of the pants and what I will do I'll lay those on this end like so but what I want to do also is so I can take advantage of the design as much as possible I'm going to make sure that design here ends up in the center of the pattern for the upper parts of the pants so this is where the design is going to fall in front of the pants pattern and all I did was take a regular pair of pants pattern a simple one and I folded up the pattern for the length that I want because remember we're going to add on another 15 or 16 inches where we're going to gather that up and put it at the bottom of the pants legs to make the sarara, sarara pants okay so here we've laid out the front as well as the back pattern pieces for the pants and this is the lining pieces that we're laying out now and we'll be cutting those okay here we're looking at the front and back piece of the patterns laid out on the fabric which is the lining and is ready to be cut out okay so the fabric here is double that is the lining is double and now I'm cutting out the lining pieces for the for the fabric or for the pattern of the blouse that I'll be making. Okay, here's the lower part of the Sharara pants and what I did is I hand pleated them about, they're about two inches deep and an inch wide. I said earlier it's about three inches, but actually it's about two inches deep and an inch wide. And you can do this by hand or you can use your ruffle foot on your sewing machine to do the same thing. But I like more of a uh, detail of a crisp pleat. 
and this is a close-up look. Okay, so so far here, what I've done, the lower part of the pants, or the Shagara pants, I've already pin pleated all of my pleats. Now I like to hand pin my pleats. You can also use the ruffling foot on your sewing machine. But I hand print pleated because I like my pleats to sort of lay flat and then I like for them to flare out. To me, especially for full size women, it just gives it a more flattering appearance. So that's what's been done here so far. And we've done the other part of the pants also. We stitched them together and this fabric, because it's so sheer, these pants, the upper part of the pants are lined. The lower part will be lined also. So here you see the lining on the upper part of the pants is completed. And what you need to do is you're gonna measure the width of the leg. And I like to have my gathers double the size the width of the leg. So if the leg is 15, then of course you want your gathers to be 30. If your leg is 12, then you double that. And then you can actually make it even three times that if you want the leg of the pants, the lower part of Shigera pants to be even fuller. So this is the stage we're at so far. And so what we're gonna do next is that I'm gonna top stitch the upper part of where the pleats are here. And the reason why I'm gonna do that, it just makes it easier so when I attach it to the upper part of the Shigera pants, that the pleats are already in place. And then we're gonna also stitch the two sides of the lower, lower part of the pants together as well. Then we're gonna pin them onto the upper part of the sugar wrap pants. Now here, what I'm doing is putting a place in a stay stitch on the lower part of the pants, the Shigera pants. And this is so that the pleats will stay in place and to make it easier to uh, work with also. Okay, so what I've done here, I stitched down the upper part of the pleats on the lower part of the pants here. But I left the pins in for right now. And then I also seam the two sides together. Here, and this is the wrong side. You can see that it's been seamed. And I searched it also. So it's all closed now. And this is what you have. Now this is going to actually be sewn onto this part, the little part of the pants. And that's exactly the uh, look you're going to get. Please stay tuned for part two of my Sharara pants creation. And be sure to subscribe to my channel, Creations by Chris.